When you think about the typical issues in traditional e-learning, it's often so theoretical that it doesn't easily transfer over to the real world, or learners can pass a test without really understanding how it applies to their work. So it's no wonder that engagement in e-learning is often so very low. And that's why a lot of instructional designers invest in creating scenarios in their e-learning so that the learner can practice applying the theory sort of hands-on. And coming up with relevant scenarios is a good idea, but it can be time-consuming, so there's only usually a limited number of them in each course. But what if you could automatically generate a fresh new relevant scenario every single time the learner logs in? I'm not talking about using AI or shuffling a deck of questions. I'm talking about procedural generation, a super easy tactic that I'm going to show you in this video. Having unlimited scenarios automatically generated without AI means that you don't have to spend time pre-designing them or even programming them into storyline. But before we begin, my name is Mary Jo and my mission is to help e-learning designers like you use game tech techniques, not gimmicks, to create relevant training that's fun for you to make and fun for your learners to take. You can learn more about my training program for instructional designers at the link below. Now here's how to generate unlimited scenarios on the fly. Let's say we're training junior realtors to estimate house prices. Typically, we teach them about factors like neighborhoods, square footage, number of rooms and baths and amenities like pools or parking spaces. We'd show them how these things affect price and then we might quiz them asking things like what's the average price per square foot in X neighborhood or how much does a pool add to the price? What about a garage? Etc. Of course, a better way is to just give them a house to evaluate. That's the scenario. So you normally have a few of those in your training, each with a correct answer. Answer. But instead, we'll make a program that will automatically generate a new house each time. Let's break down how to do this. First, you want to figure out what the challenge is. Well, that's easy. They have to accurately estimate the price of the house. Second, list the information that the learner needs in order to get that right. So in this case, they need to know neighborhoods, square footage, rooms, baths, amenities, etc. Those are your variables. Third, generate a list of options for each variable. So here's a list of eight possible neighborhoods. Square footage can be anywhere between 1,000 and 3,000. Rooms can be one, two, three, or four. Baths can be one, one and a half, or two. Pool can be yes or no. And parking space can be zero, one, two, or three. And step four, at runtime, you will have the program randomly pick one from each of these lists. So let's set neighborhood. Pick a number between one and eight, and based on the number, set the neighborhood. For square footage, pick a number between 1,000 and 3,000 and so on for each of your variables. Then those randomly generated values get plugged into these blanks here. That gives me a 2,500 square foot house in Hermosa with a pool, three rooms and one bath. And that's just one of thousands of houses I can generate from those six lists I made. And by the way, this image can also be randomly selected from a pool. And now the learner has to figure out the house's value using the rules that you've taught them. Now under the hood, the program is also calculating the correct answer by a formula that accounts for all the variables. If the player's estimate falls within an acceptable range of the right answer, the player succeeds. But here's the real beauty of this. Usually if you pre-generate scenarios, you'll build each one individually in storyline. Here I have a slide for each of my 10 houses. But if you auto-generate, you just need to build one slide, not one template or one master, one slide, and you're done. That saves you a ton of scenario design time, but also authoring time. Okay, so that's a case where the right answer is determined by a mathematical formula that Storyline can just calculate. What happens when the answer is not a quantity? To answer that, let's look at a totally different scenario taken from a real world project. So here we're training customer service reps to use a software. These customer service reps get calls from clients and they have to enter support tickets accurately. For example, Alex Mitchell from the accounting department in the Leacock building calls to report that their printer Epson 12 is out of toner. So step one, what's the challenge? To enter everything accurately. Step two, what do they need in order to be able to do that? Well, they need all the information in these fields. Caller, first name, last name, method, department, location, equipment, number, and issue. So those are my pools. Step three, then you fill up the pools by populating these lists with as many elements as you like. Step four, again, at runtime, the program is randomly gonna select one option from each pool and create the scenario. Jane Smith, who works in HR at head office, emails to report that her computer, Dell 2343, won't power on. To assess the learner's performance, we're going to simulate the software and track what they put in. Did they correctly enter James Smith? Did they select the right equipment and the right problem? The way we check is that for each element, you have the variable that's going to get randomly set by the program. That's the right answer, Jane. 
and the corresponding variable that holds whatever the user is going to put in there. So we have first name and first name answer. Once they've completed the task, if all the right answers are the same as all the user's answers, then they did perfect. You can also just give them a point for each one they get right. So that gives you a nice range of possible scores. And again, with just six options in each pool, you get over a quarter million scenarios. Now I'm sure you can think of a few ways that this will not be perfectly accurate to the real world. So let's see how to modify this technique to make your scenarios even more true to life. The first case is sometimes these variables are not independent from each other. For example, let's say that we have to also put in priority. I can't just randomly generate the answer for that field because priority depends on what the problem is. So this field is not independent. It depends on this field issue. So let's say the policy about priority is that the only time you should ever put in high priority is if a piece of equipment is on fire. So here, I'll randomly generate all my variables the normal way, except priority. For priority, I'm always going to set it to low. So that's going to be the right answer most of the time. But if the problem is the equipment is on fire, then I'm going to set the priority again, this time on high. That's the right answer in this case. Second, and much more frequently, you're probably not going to only have scenarios where a piece of equipment is faulty. We can also get tickets where it's user error. They forgot their password. They clicked on a phishing email. They lost their access card, whatever. It's hard to make those cases fit with my original scenario template. So the simplest way to handle that is to make a completely different template. So here I have faulty equipment template, which you've already seen, and I'll make a totally different one that describes a user error scenario. First name, last name, method, department, location, issue. Then at runtime, I can randomly select which type of scenario I'm going to present. And based on that, I'm going to jump to the correct one. And then that will get generated on the fly. This last method is also super useful if you want to make sure that the learner successfully passes at least three of each scenario type. You can make them go through this one three times and then this one three times. So procedural generation goes beyond just saving you time. From the learner's perspective, it gives them a hands-on way to practice as much as they need to to get things right. And that repetition never gets stale to them because each scenario is different. It also means that you can be sure they're not memorizing the right answers to your pre-made scenarios. So your training is actually actually way more effective and relevant. And if you want to master all the gamification tactics, check out the effective gamification framework, which is my step-by-step -step program to become a champ at making engaging and effective e-learning that delivers results. The link to book a call with me is right here in the description. I look forward to talking to you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.